Kowai. Te upoko o te ika. Kaihia. Te upoko o te ika. Te upoko, te upoko, te upoko, te upoko. Te na The Outdoor Access Commission is in. The Walking Access Commission is out. Last week, Te Apoko Oti Ika attended a renaming hui to reflect upon this. Aotearoa's trails aren't just for walkers, they're for all of us. And in 2019, a government review urged such a name change to represent a closer connection between the Commission and Māori. Pumatua Wairangi Jones explains further. Seven considerations when we look at any, any name whānau, but I'll just uh, talk about some of them. First of all, the name has got to represent the organisation just as it does in the whare nui. Uh, when we go on to any marae, uh, we have the name of the marae, we have the name of the whare nui, and as far as the iwi is concerned, the hapu is concerned, that is their name, that's who they are. And so we want any name, such as this whānau, to have the same feelings of emotion, emotional connection, uh, as our people on Marae feel. Uh, we also want it to be uh, an ingoa rangatira. So this is not just a name whānau, this is a name that carries mana. So it's a mana that comes from where? It comes from the karakia, comes from whakapapa, comes from te awatsua, comes from all the stories of the land. Again, we also look at um, it being an ingoa mana. An ingoa mana means it's a name that inspires the staff just as it inspires the hapu and the iwi so that whenever they mention their name, wherever they happen to be around the motu, I am that whare, I am that marae, I am heading a anu. So the same sense of pride is what we want uh, the staff to feel, the whānau to feel. Uh, not only that whānau, you've got a name of mana whānau, we want it to also capture the other stakeholders, the other communities that we work with. So we don't work with just our name whānau, we work with Erenga, Ānu, Kuwao, Te Aroa. If we go on to the Marae whānau, we have our tūpuna, we have our whare. But they are just pieces of wood whānau without the story. And so it's a story that people connect to. So how do we get up, gather the story? And so we went through a process of surveying and we went through a process of discussion of whānanga in order to be able to capture the thoughts uh, the values, the thinking, the perspectives, the philosophies from which we could then derive uh, a name. Uh, we put up five uh, recommendations. So I'm going to go very quickly. This is just a whakarā pūpūtō tanga whānau. This is a summary of the thoughts behind this name. First of all, uh, heringa. Heringa what? So heringa a nuku. The name nuku in there is critical. You would have heard me saying it in the, in the karaki, papa tu anuku. Papa Tuanuku, the land, people are crossing, they're making access across Papa Tuanuku. Nuku also means to move, it's access. So they're making access across the land. Papa Tuanuku in Te Māori is connection, it's Papa it's who I am, it's my identity. And so we as people of Aotearoa, of all of the communities of Aotearoa, that are accessing in all of the places, uh, that they can go to as the, work, uh, as the result of the mahi that we do. That was what was meant by uh, nuku. Now the heringa is that sense of connection. Honunga is another word. But again we were looking at how can we connect people and the work that we do as heringa a nuku uh, with what it is uh, that's true and important to us. And so we have heringa a nuku. A nuku means of nuku. Of movement of access. Whereabouts whānau? Aotearoa. So we're talking about all communities of Aotearoa. Why? Because it's distinctive whānau. Mm. It's distinctive. It's what sets us apart. Pomatua Wairangi Jones there explaining how they landed on the name Hedena Anuku Aotearoa. Many would associate former Wellington Mayor Celia Wade Brown as being a strong outdoors advocate. So it should come as no surprise she's continuing to contribute in the green space as a board member of Herina Anuku Aotearoa. 
Well, I had the pleasure, um, once I stopped being mayor, of taking what I call my political detox and walking Te Araroa, and it's a fantastic way to get to know the country. And uh, in my role, and um, governance role, it's wonderful to try and support um, both Te Araroa and a lot of other outdoor access. So I'm really pleased we've got a new name um, because it's walking's really important. I still think it's the most important, um, but we also want to enable fishing, hunting, kayaking, cycling access to the Fenua as well. Two ministers were in attendance, Conservation Minister Poto Williams and Mika Faitiri, who clarifies why she was there. Um, so I am the Minister for um, Heading a Anuku, o Aotearoa, so I'm the Associate Minister of Agriculture, of which uh, Walking Access, or now Heading a Anuku, sits under my ministerial portfolio. Minister Faiteri then offered the government's position on the name change. I think the recent review said that the um, Walking Access Commission probably um, didn't reflect the significance of what they did in sort of Aotearoa New Zealand in 2022. Um, and so I think there was a need to actually identify itself uh, with New Zealand of 2022 going forward. So um, there were a lot of cries for um, not only the name change, but the way that um, the Commission of old um, opportunity to engage more effectively with iwi and Māori landowners to bring to bear uh, what they do um, so that iwi and Māori and, fa- and hapu can participate uh, in terms of opening up walking access, but also more importantly telling stories. So the kaupapa is like a collab between tangata whenua, tangata tiriti and our history. So the heading a Nuku with the existing Te Araroa trails um, obviously has been approved by successive councils and landowners so that people can walk uh, on that particular trail. So going forward, I think there's a huge opportunity for Māori landowners, like I said, hapu and iwi in my speech, to actually work in partnership with the heading a Nuku to open access ways, but more importantly to tell the story of what transpired uniquely on the Finua and share it with the nation. So, how realistic is that? Considering um, that's a, that's another huge cope up to add the historical. Absolutely. Context. So, one, the government is committed to telling uh, histories in school. Um, you saw Matariki. Uh, inaugural Matariki uh, public holiday uh, this year and despite every all the critics it actually went off really well I think the timing is right yeah. like I said this is not around taking land off our Māori people, I want to make that very clear, I'd be the last person to be at the forefront of that but it's an opportunity it's a, an opportunity to have a conversation it may not be for everybody but what I'm asking of uh, Te Ringa Anuku is to open those conversations with those of the land, particularly around those past sites. Yeah. And as you've seen, we've opened quite a few of them publicly. The government's got behind a lot of them. And so it's just really a pivot now into how we connect them, uh, should those landowners and iwi want that to, so that we can open better access ways to those past sites, which tell a unique story about who we are as Aotearoa New Zealanders. And like you were saying, it can be, some of the stories are quite confronting. To, especially for um, probably non-Māori um, and who don't who've bought, been brought up without knowing the history. Absolutely, and when I use the treaty settlements in terms of um, those that have settled, and there's been more iwi uh, that have settled and told their stories in the form of historic accounts. They tell a unique story of what transpired with those people, generally at a battle site. And all I'm saying is, it's in the public domain already. It is really just bringing and giving at more prominence in terms of either a walking trail or like we're seeing with those battle sites are now being commemorated and so yes it is compelling but for us to go forward as a people we do need to know how our two peoples came together and like I said the good, the bad, the indifferent so we get better understandings that we are one people to go forward and so that was the tunnel in the speech. I've spoken your Whaikurero earlier about uh, the well-being and the role that uh, Hedana Anuku can play for people. Can you explain, expand upon that? Yeah, so during lockdown um, we've had two major lockdowns in this country and for some, I think the first one was six weeks and I think the second one might have been five weeks. For a lot of people the only time they got out of their home 
homes was actually if they were doing a walk, uh, you know, to get some exercise and fresh air. So um, I know that a lot of people, when they were allowed to go out safely, they actually went on some of our trails. Uh, and getting out of a stuffy home with maybe lots of children or intergenerational people and walking trails, I think, did provide a lot of uh, relief for those that use the walkways. And so I just wanted to make that point that we do play a part in New Zealand's mental well-being, and I have raised that up with my ministerial colleagues. And your favourite track as a hiker, what's yours? Um, so my attempt is to actually walk the entire Te Araroa Trail, and I thought it would I could do it over um, Christmas period, but they told me I might need several months. So <laughs> you know what, I might just start at the top and come down, or start at the bottom and go up. But uh, it's my ambition is to walk the entire Te Araroa Trail. May not be all at once. That's Minister of Hedena Anuku Aotearoa, Mika Faitiri. Hedena Anuku Aotearoa enhances opportunities for us to connect with and enjoy the great outdoors. And as they say, a trail gets us from A to B, but between those points is the journey. <laughs> Oh, we're the Aroha, 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 oh, we're the Aroha,